Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now going to answer a question from one of the um, GCE papers from the UK. Um, this is at Excel, the UK exam. This is from the actual uh, A2 exam. This is 9MA paper 2, Pure Mathematics 2, June 2022. This is question number 5, and this relates to the questions that we do in P2 in our international A-level syllabus. So this is a relatively new type of um, topic since the new syllabus started, where you have the trapezium rule and then you have some sort of questions related to use your answer that you found from the trapezium rule to work out certain things where you have to manipulate the expression somehow. And that's something that we find is quite new. So some of these new type of topics like proofs and topics like this, um, if I find some questions elsewhere, apart from the international A-level papers, I will try to, you know, go through and go over those to give a bit more practice of this type of question. So we start off with a regular question about using the trapezium rule uh, with all the values given. So the tables already filled out for us. We have to use the trapezium rule to calculate um, an approximation, an estimate of the integral between 3 and 9 of log to the base 3 of 2x with respect to x. Of course, we don't have to integrate. We're using the trapezium rule. Okay, even at our stage, we don't know how to integrate something like this anyway. So to use the trapezium rule, now some people make some really uh, silly mistakes using the trapezium rule. And I want to just address those. Like some people think they have to, like here we have the table already filled out for us. The table is already filled out for us. So there's no need for us um, you know, to try to work out what the width of each trapezium is. I mean, basically, the trapezium rule would be something like this. Um, you know, let's say the log curve would look something, it would, have some, it would look something like this. Okay, so you would from 3 to 9, say that's 3 and that's 9 over here. You would, what, what's happened here is they've taken every 1.5, Width of so they're taking um, trapeziums of width 1.5, so 3 to 4.5 to 6 to 7.5 to 9. So they've got all these trapeziums, they all have that same width, which is 1.5. So we don't have to work out the width of the trapezium, we know that the trapeziums are going to be basically like this. The distance between the parallel sides is 1.5. We can tell from here. I don't have to say, okay, 9 minus 3 divided by something. No. That's when we have to ourselves work out how many strips we're going to use. Okay, here they've told us, basically we have one, two, three, four strips. Okay, one, two, three, four strips. Five ordinates makes four strips. We don't even have to worry about that. We can see that the distance between the power sides, which are our h, is 1.5. 1 1.5, 1 1.5, they're all the same, of course. Okay, so we can just go straight into the formula now. When we're finding the, uh, the area of a trapezium, we have the two parallel sides. So it's going to be the distance between the parallel sides over two times the sum of the parallel sides. So here we have all these are the parallel sides. So if we look at the first trapezium, we're going to use, it's going to be 1.5 divided by 2 times this length plus that length. Okay, so this length is what? This length is when x equals 3, 1.63, plus this length here, which is 2. And then for the second trapezium, we're going to have 1.5 over 2 times, and we're going to have this length plus that length, which is going to, we're going to use the 2 again, and then the 2.26 again. That'll be 2 and 2.6. And then we're going to use the 2.26 again, and 2.46. And then we're going to use the 2.46 again, and then the 2.63. The only two that we use one time were these two. So you're going to have 1.5 divided by 2 times, we've got 1.6, I'm going to put plus 2.63, 1.63 plus 2.63, plus, and the rest of them we're using them twice. So two times the rest of them. Let me just get rid of this now. So two times the ones in the middle, which is plus 2 plus 2.26 plus 2.46. Okay, so that will give us the area of the trapezium. Okay, so that's going to give us the area of our trapezium, um, an estimate for the uh, so the area under the curve, it will be an estimate for the area under the curve, or estimate for this integral. So we can just stick this all in our calculator now and get the answer. So we have uh, 1.5 over 2 times, then I'm going to have 1.63 
plus 2.63 plus and then I'm going to have two times whatever's inside here which is 2 plus 2.26 plus 2.46 okay I think that's everything I really got that in there so I'm going to close the bracket now that first bracket and then the second bracket and I'll press equals and it gives me 531 over 40 okay 531 over 40 and it didn't tell us how to round let's see what it gives us it gives us 13.275 so we can just leave it like that that's fine 13.275 that is an estimate for this um you know integral okay so we can say that um we end up with 431 over 40 i'll write it in that form so we can say that the integral of the log to the base 3 of 2x with respect to x between 3 and 9 gives us 5 through 1 over 40. So when we go to the next question, we can we can we know that the integral of between 3 and 9 of log to the base 3 of 2x with respect to x is 5 3 1 over 40. Okay. 5 through 1 over 40. And that was the original question. Just make sure log to the base 3 of 2x between 3 and 9. Okay, so this is our answer to part A. This is the answer to part A. And it's saying use your answer to part A and making your method clear, estimate the integral of the integral of log to the base 3 of 2x to the power of 10 with respect to x between 3 and 9. So now what we can do here is we can use the power law. I know that log to the base 3 of 2x to the power of 10 is the same as 10 times log to the base 3 of 2x. The power law that we know, log to the base A of B to the power of C is the same as C times log to the base A of B. That's one of the laws of logarithms that we know. One of the three laws, one of them is addition law. This is the power law. So I can rewrite this in this form. So now I can say that the integral between 3 and 9 of log to the base 3 of 2x to the power of 10 will, with respect to x will give me exactly the same as the integral between 3 and 9 of 10 times log to the base 3 of 2x with respect to x. Now, one of the students was asking in one of the videos uh, earlier um, about how did I get this constant outside here. So I can, you can write the constant outside. The integral between 3 and 9 of 10 times log to the base 3 of 2x with respect to x is the same as saying 10 times log the integral of log to the base 3 of 2x with respect to x this is the same thing as that this is exactly the same as that okay like for example if i have to integrate uh, 2x with respect to x i'm going to get um, when i integrate this i'll end up with 2x squared over 2 2x squared over 2 which gives me x squared okay when i integrate this now if i take the two outside first and then I integrate this with respect to x, I'll have 2 times x squared over 2, and then they'll cancel out anyway, so it's the same thing. This and this are the same. You can take a constant outside of the integral sign and integrate what's inside it. They're exactly the same thing. Okay, it's very important for you to understand that. That's a very important um, understanding. So you can take that 2 outside, and like any constant, you can write it outside, integrate what's inside, and then multiply by 2. It's the same as integrating it as one thing. It's not like we're integrating the 2 and the x separately. This is integrating 2x as one term. So you just take the x, you increase its power by 1 and divide by 2. It's not like there's two separate terms here. There's one term. So you can write it as a multiple of x outside the integral sign. That's very important. And that helps us understand how to proceed with this question here. Okay, so that's an important little point about integration. Okay, so now we can see basically that we have this is the same as what we had in the answer to part A. So in this type of question where it says use your answer to part A, they don't want you to start using the trapezium rule again and make another table or use integration. No, they want us to use the fact that we know that this is equal to that. So we have to rewrite this such that we have something in terms of our answer to part A. And now we have it. We know that our answer is 10 times the answer to part, part A. So it's, it's going to be equal to 10 times 5, 3, 1 over 40, okay, which is going to be 5, 3, 1 over 4. So our answer is going to be this, okay, times 10, which gives us 5 through 1 over 4, which is 132.75. 132.75.
And there's the answer to part B, part one. We have used our answer to part A to um, find an estimate for this integral. Now for B part two, we're gonna do very, something very similar. So we're gonna, again, use the fact that we know the answer to part A is equal to five, three, one over 40. So we want to concentrate on trying to rewrite what we're given so that we have something in terms of this. We have to have this in our answer somewhere, and then we can use the answer to part A to answer that. So now we've got log to the base three of 18 um, X with respect to X between three and nine again. So remember, we have to write it in terms of log to the base three of two X. So we want log to base three of two X. So what we can do is we can use some of the laws that we know. I wanna have a two X in here. Okay, now I want to have a 2x in here such that I can um, not have to use any type of integration for the other part. So I can I could try to split this up. How can I split this up? Well, I know that um, I can use, um, let's have a look here, two, I can say log to the base three of, um, we can have, let's say, uh, 9 times 2x, I can write that, okay, um, that is going to be log to the base 3 of 9 times 2x, okay, and I can rewrite this as log to the base 3 of 9 plus log to the base 3 of 2x, so now I have got this, what I'm looking for, I'm, I have to write, I've got this, that's what I have to try and write it in terms of, so I've I've used the addition law to split this up into log to the base three of nine times two x. Okay, and this, we know that, you know, we have the law log to the base a of b times c is the same as log to the base a of b plus log to the base a of c. This is one of the laws of logarithms. A product can be split up into a sum of these two terms to the same base of, of this. So this is log to the base three of nine, plus log to the base three of two x. And I know that log to the base three of nine is equal to two. This is like two plus log to the base three of two x. Because we know that from the laws of logarithms, log to the base a of b equals c. If you write in index form, this is the base, this is the power, and this is the result. I can rewrite it in this form. So if I have log to the base three of nine, it means three to the power of something equals nine. Well, three to the power of two equals nine. So I know that this is equal to two. And now I can rewrite this in a form which will make it easy for us to deal with. So I have between nine and three, and I have, um, well, let me just write the original thing first. So I can say that log to the base three of 18 X with respect to X can be rewritten as, as I've just shown here, two plus log to the base three of two X with respect to X. Okay, so I've shown how this can be written in that form. So this can be re rewritten like that. Now, what we should know when we have two separate terms here, when we integrate, for example, when I integrate x cubed plus 2x squared plus x, when I integrate this with respect to x, what we're actually doing without writing down is we are integrating each term separately. So we have an integral of x cubed plus the integral of 2x squared with respect to x plus the integral of x with respect to x. We integrate each term separately when you have separate terms, okay? And again, as I said, I can write that two outside if I want to, it's the same thing, but this is one term. So here I can integrate this as two separate terms. I can say the integral between three and nine of two with respect to x plus the integral between three and nine of log to the base three of two x with respect to x. And that's exactly what I'm looking to do. I'm, I'm looking to write this on its own so I can replace this with what we found it is equal to in the beginning, which was 531 over 40. Okay, so I know that this part is 531 over 40, and the rest of it, well, I can integrate this easily. I know how to integrate two with respect to x. This is gonna be gonna give us two x, and I have my limits of nine and three, and this is going to give me 531 over 40, which we know this is the answer to part A. So now I can just replace the x with uh, nine and then three, so I have two times nine, minus two times three, this is a different integral, plus five, three, one over 40. So this can give you 18 minus six, which is 12 plus five, three, one over 40. So it's basically 12 plus the answer we got from the first question. 
Okay, so this is 5 through 1 over 40 plus 12, which gives us basically 25.275, 25.275. And there's the answer, okay, to part B, part two of this question. So this is using the laws of logarithms and using our understanding of integration. Some important points here that we have to take into account is uh, are that when you have the integral of a constant times something with respect to x, you can write that as, um, you know, that constant times the integral of x with respect to x. So, you know, so the constant of some function with respect to x, some constant times that, you can take the constant outside. But when you have two separate functions that are added together, like a ter two terms added together like this, okay, you can integrate each of them separately. Basically, that's what we do. That's what we actually do without writing. We don't normally write this out like this here, but that's actually what we're doing. So we can rewrite this as an integral between 3 and 9 of 2 with respect to x separately, and the integral of um, log to the base 3 of 2x with respect to x. That I can replace with my answer to part A, and that I can calculate very easily. And there we have the answer to part B, part 2. And that concludes this question, which is from the um, June 2020 GCE this is from the A2 paper, Pure Mathematics P2, from the UK syllabus 9MA002. Other questions from this paper, if I get to answer them, will be in the playlist that will appear in this section over here. Other questions from the trapezium rule from P2. This is actually from P2 International A-Level. Um, it will be in the playlist over here. Um, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And you can watch the video up here, which will take you to, um, you know, which will explain to you how to use my channel in an efficient way for you to find what you need to find. Thank you for watching and see you soon.